What do you like about Easter? Celebrate with your family. Easter hunting for eggs. You get to open them and do stuff in there. Money. Lots of candy. What does the Easter Bunny do? Ox. He hides the eggs. He's a person that's dressed up in a costume. Who is Jesus? Jesus is like a person of God. He is God's son. What does Jesus look like? Long brown hair and a brown beard. And he's got like a robe on. Yeah, there's a lot of what karate people wear, I think. Who are the disciples? Twelve chosen followers of Jesus. Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Thomas, Matthew, James, and Matthew, Thaddeus, Simon, Judas, and Thalia. They're the good guys. What did Jesus teach? How to pray and that God's real. To always love one another when it's hard. Teaching them about Christmas and Valentine's Day. What kinds of miracles did Jesus do? He turned water into wine. He made five loaves and two fishes spread a long way. He helped people if they were sick. He walked on water. There was a storm and it was all windy and he said, Jesus, Jesus, and then he calmed it down so, so that they won't be scared. What would be a really cool miracle for him to do? Or would be to be a superhero like Batman. What do you like to It's the government. What did they eat at the Last Supper? Bread and like some dipping sauce. Do you like it some fruit rice? And what's with the juice? Some vegetables with chocolate on it. Why would some people not like Jesus? That everybody was calling him king. They didn't believe that he was God's son. They thought he would only hang out with the people who had done no sin. And he helped the sinners because they're the ones who needed help. What did those people do to Jesus? They wore swords, trying to capture him, whipped him, and put a crown of thorns on his head, and made him carry the cross a long way. Put him on a cross and stabbed him. They hurt into his heart. He died on Good Friday. And then somebody put him in a tomb that had this big rock over it. What happened on Sunday morning? He grew from the ground. He rose from the dead. What did the disciples do when they saw Jesus? Very afraid. Thought he was a ghost. They saw the scars. They touched him. Jesus, Jesus is alive. Look at my love. They are so happy. How do we follow Jesus? Confess their sins. Ask him into our heart by praying. And then he's like in our heart. <laughs> Why did Jesus do all of this? It was all for us because he loves us. He said, I don't want them to be scared of me. Whenever they're hurt, I will help them. We love you, Jesus. And I do too. So tonight, so tonight we're going to try to take you through a little bit of the end of Jesus' lives, but I'm going to give you a brief summary of what happened. How many know, how many likes Christmas? Well, that's where the story starts. But where the story ends is with you. So we're going to go through that. So everybody knows on Christmas, Santa Claus comes. We get presents. We get all the cool things. We put up Christmas trees and lights. And we get excited about Christmas coming because it's like one of the best holidays because you get presents, right? Yeah. Hey, it's okay to like presents. I like presents. So you like presents? Are you guys out there? Yes. Do you don't like presents? Okay, parents, do you hear this? You can save yourself a bunch of money. But, all right. So, starts on Christmas. Jesus, God had a plan from the very beginning that there needed to be something that would bridge the gap between man and God. Because, see, currently between man and God, there was a hole called sin. And there was no way to get to God except through rituals and traditions and all that type of stuff. But God had a plan that was better than that and said that we don't need to do that. So you know what? I'm going to create something. 
I created this whole world. I'm going to create something else. I'm going to create my son. So he sent his son out to be born of Mary to live, to walk this earth. And then we've heard about all the miracles that Jesus did, right? How many of you have heard of that video, Jesus turned water into wine? Jesus took two loaves, I mean five loaves and two fishes and fed a multitude of people enough that not only did they eat, get full, but they had some to take home with them. Jesus opened blinded eyes. Jesus took people who couldn't walk and healed them so they could walk again. Jesus took people that were dead and raised them from the dead. And Jesus did all these different miracles. And the story goes on and on and on. The story of when he was on the boat and there was a storm came and was blowing the boat around. And, and the disciples were on there and they were scared. So they woke Jesus up. They said, hey man, you got to get up here and do something because this boat's about to fall apart and we're all going to drown. Jesus is like, what? Come on, guys. Don't you have any faith? So he gets up there. He stands on the edge of that boat. He points to the sea and says, peace, be still. And the storm went away. The clouds went away. The rain went away. And the waves stopped. And there was peace. And on and on and on the story goes that Jesus did all these great miracles. And then on this day, over 2,000 years ago, Jesus came riding into Jerusalem. Now, see, here's the thing. When a king rode in on a donkey, he was coming because there was peace. And he was coming in to, to see the crowds and the people and all that stuff. But when Jesus, or I'm sorry, when a king rode in on a horse, he was coming in because it was a war time. And he was coming in to lead his, his, uh, his commanders and generals and all that stuff. So Jesus came riding in Jerusalem on a donkey. You see, Jesus was all about peace. Christianity is all about peace and love and loving one another because that's what Jesus did for us. So, Jesus comes into town, and I would say he was probably a celebrity. And here he comes, riding down the, down the road, and people were on this side of him, people were on this side of him, and they started yelling things. Does anybody know what they were yelling? Well, they were yelling, Jesus, man, Jesus is walking by. You know, that's pretty exciting. But there was a word that they yelled. What? what I heard it. Wait, I heard it. Now here on this side, what did they yell? What did they yell? And, and they were excited because the guy who did all these miracles, that some of them had been healed, some of them had been delivered, set free, some of them couldn't see, now can see, and they're happy. Jesus is coming to town. They're excited. There was a party going on that day, right? Well, here's the thing. Over that next week, what happened? Because they went from yelling, Hosanna to the highest. How great is Jesus Christ, the man who did all these great things. The king of the Jews suddenly turned to anger. And they stopped yelling, Hosanna. They stopped yelling about how wonderful Jesus is and how great he is to say, You're right. We should kill him. Death to him. Crucify him. Crucify him. There was so much hate in their heart. There was so much aggravation. There was so much anger. They're yelling these things. And they did things to Jesus on that day that none of us would take, that none of us could put up with, that none of us would allow, that your parents wouldn't allow. But yet, God had a plan. He had a plan. Jesus was to be born, then Jesus was to be sacrificed as the ultimate sacrifice so that for everything that we did wrong, for every sin or bad thing that we'd ever done, for every lie we ever told, for everything we ever stole, for every bad word we said, for every disrespect we gave to our parents or whatever, that that would go away and that we would be forgiven. So I want to talk to you for just a few minutes about what they did. Because see, I don't think sometimes we understand how bad it was for Jesus. And if you understand how bad it was for Jesus, then you would understand how miraculous that it was that Jesus put up with all that stuff, allowed all that stuff to happen to him, allowed all that. How many has ever been spit on before? How many thinks that's gross? How many thinks whoever spit on you should be punched? I don't like being spit on. Somebody did it to me one time, and if I was faster, 
They would have got it. But, hey, I am what I am. But in that day when they crucified him, they spit on him. They mocked him. They made fun of him. How many ever been made fun of? How many ever knows about a bully? These people were bullies. These were bad people. So I'm going to take you through a little bit of the story. So here comes Jesus. He's riding into town. Now, you know what the people did for him as he's coming into Jerusalem? What were they saying? I forgot. Hosanna! 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 And they would take their jackets off and they would throw them on the ground because you know what? Jesus is coming to town and you know what? He, he is so powerful. He shouldn't be walking on the regular dirt like the rest of us. He should be walking on top of our coats because Jesus is here. Jesus is amazing. And they were waving palm branches and they were yelling, Hosanna! Hosanna! They were waving as he came in. You like being waved? Can you feel that? If I hit you, I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. But they were yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna. And they were waving these palm branches because the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is coming into town, man. There's a party going on. But then over that week, something happened. Something got into the hearts. The devil got to the hearts of those people. But to fulfill prophecy. And because Jesus knew that prophecy had to be fulfilled, he allowed everything that happened to him to be done. So I want to talk to you first about what happened. They put Jesus on a trial, kind of like a courtroom. And, and, and uh, so they're, they're up there and they're trying to, you know, you, you got the one side saying that he did this, he did, they couldn't say what Jesus did wrong except that he claimed that he was the king of the Jews. That was the only thing that they had on him because everything that Jesus did was good things. How many things open somebody's eyes that can't see and healing or blindness is a good thing, right? Yes. How many things if you can't walk and Jesus comes by and makes you, heals you so you can walk again? That's a good thing, right? right. How many things if you're sick and Jesus comes by and heals you? That's a good thing, right? right? So Jesus did all these good things, but yet the people hated him so much. So, you know what they did? What? They started beating him. They, they have a cross, I, I think probably even bigger than that. And they made him carry this cross up to what they call Calvary Mountain. Calvary Hill, uh, Mount Calvary. And as they walked by, they did things to him. They beat him. And they had a cat of nine tails, is what it was called. And the reason was it was a cat of nine tails because it was kind of like a, a cat tail, number one. But it had nine stripe, uh, straps on it with pieces of metal and glass on it. And see, the Roman soldier, that was his job. He was trained. He was a professional beater. And it was his job to, to beat him. So as he's walking by, and what the soldier would do is he would, he would sling it, but then he would flip his wrist and pull it. So he's actually pulling chunks of meat and skin out of Jesus as he walked by. How many could handle that? You're carrying this big cross. Okay, you're tired. You're thirsty. It's hot. But yet, people are spitting on you, and he's taking that. I've got another whip up here, if I can do it. Just to kind of give you... An idea of the sound. How many has ever been spanked with a belt before? Okay, well I guarantee you the spanking that you got is nowhere near to the spanking that Jesus got. And so as he's walking down and they're... Could you imagine that on your back? They stripped his clothes, they took them off, and so he's walking and, and, and they're beating him. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine taking that kind of a beating? But see, the whole time that he's being beat, he's carrying that cross, that big heavy cross over his shoulder, and he's, he's walking down that road, and the whole time he's being beat, you know what he's thinking? Not thinking about how bad the pain is. I'm sure that was probably on his mind too. But that wasn't the focus. The focus on his mind is, I've got to do it because somebody needs a savior. Somebody's going to die and go to hell if, if they're not, if, if I don't do this. So I've got to do this because somebody needs a savior. So they're beating him with the whip. They're, they're, he's bleeding at this point. Well, then they, when they strip his clothes, well, we'll get to that later. They, that hurt. I may not be doing this in the exact order, but I just want you guys to know all the stuff that Jesus went through in his life and his the end of his life. Now we talked about the miracles, so I want you to think about the miracles. And I told you that the story didn't end here. So we're gonna get to that. So 
Jesus claimed that he was the king of kings and the Lord of lords, that he was the king of the Jew, which turned out to be the reason that they were so mad at him, because they figured he was a mockery and, and didn't believe in this thing and, and didn't believe in what he claimed he was. So they said, well, you know what? You're going to claim you're the king of the Jews, and we're going to make you the king of the Jews. So they said, we made you a crown, Jesus. We got you a crown that's just perfect for you. Does anybody see this? Now, the crown of thorns, we've heard. How many have ever heard of the crown of thorns? On this crown, you see all these sharp thorns? How many of us wear this? No, that hurt. But they didn't just, you know, gently, okay, be careful. They didn't do that. You know what they did? Come here, Jaden. No? All right. No, they didn't just set it on Jesus' head real, real lightly. Okay, I don't want to hurt him. No, they jammed it onto his head. They pushed it down into his scalp. And at that point, and then blood started coming down his face. The whole time that they're doing this to him, the whole time they're, they're, they're doing all these bad things to him, he's thinking, somebody needs a savior. Somebody needs me to do this. I've got to do this because somebody needs to be saved. Somebody needs a way to heaven. And God says, I'm it. So you know what? i got to do this. I said they stripped him of his clothes. The soldiers, he's Jesus, you know, the soldiers actually gambled to try to win his clothes that they took from him. I mean, it'd be like a celebrity, like, a, I don't know if, uh, who's a celebrity? Who's somebody famous? I mean, how many would like an autographed jersey from Yadier Molina? So kind of like that. You think that's cool? So that's what, the, that's what these soldiers thought. You know what? This is great. Yes, I win! They grab his clothes and, and, and they get it. While Jesus was on the cross, and I didn't have my nail, but they had these big spikes. And, and they put Jesus, they, they laid that cross down, they laid Jesus on top of it, and they took the spikes and they put them into his wrist. And they hammered and hammered and hammered until it went through his wrist. And I'm being real with you guys because you guys need to know what's real and what's up, okay? And, and they nailed it, nailed it, nailed it, hammered it, hammered it, hammered it, till it got into the wood, until his left arm was stuck. Then they took another one, and they did it to his right arm, and they kept going until it was stuck. And then they took, he put his feet together, and they went one right through his feet until it was stuck. And they nailed Jesus to the cross. Well, they didn't just leave him laying on the ground. No, because this is an example. When they did these punishments, it was to show everybody, hey, you don't want to do what they did because if you do what they did, you'll be there, right? So learn your lesson. Don't do what he did if you don't want to be where he is, okay? But what did Jesus do? He claimed he was the king of the Jews because he was the king of the Jews. Jesus, I told you while he was on this road, he was thirsty and all this stuff. So he's on the cross and he's saying, I need something to drink. So you know what they did? Because this wasn't a nice thing. They had a sponge on a stick, and they would dip it in the cup, and they would put, you know, they would they, normally they would dip the water, dip it in water, and they would stick it up so they could suck a little bit of water out of that sponge and it would help with their thirst because they're in agonizing pain. But see, Jesus, they, they didn't want to do that. So they actually stuck this into a cup, like I said. But inside the cup was vinegar. How many's ever smelled vinegar before? How many's ever drank vinegar before? How many wants to drink vinegar? So then he's up there, he's in agonizing pain, and they stepped that up there, and he had to drink that. Because see, they hated Jesus. They were mad at him for claiming to be the king of kings. What did he do wrong? Other than he claimed that he was the king of kings? Because he was the king of kings. But then while Jesus was on the cross, they said that they uh, need to make sure he, he was dead. So what they would do is they would take a, a spear, and it would be a long stick with like a knife or a, I'm thinking it would be like an arrowhead looking thing. You know, there's a big sharp tip to it, okay? And they would 
poke him, they would stab him to make sure that he was dead. So I couldn't find anything like that in our props, but I found something that I think is a very good representation of that. And if you see, I found a pitchfork. Now, what is uh, who normally carries this kind of thing? We see this at Halloween, okay? The devil. The devil. See, the devil was all about this whole thing. This is what had to happen. He, the, the devil didn't know he was playing with the prophecy. But then a soldier, to make sure Jesus was dead, he stabbed him in the side. The Bible says blood and water flowed. Then he uttered from the cross the most famous words that Jesus said, It is finished. And he died. All because someone tonight needs a Savior. Somebody tonight needs a way to God. And Jesus said, I have to do this so there's a way over sin to get to God. So here he is. He's up on the cross. But you know why he did all this? He did this for two reasons. Just two reasons? Well, it's many more than that. But this will make sense to you. He did this for my sins. And he also did this for your sins. That covers everything. Jesus went through all this for my sins and for your sins. Well, what does that mean? Everything he went through, he did it because he loves you more. Isn't that amazing? Before you were even born, all this went on. Before you were even born, all this went on because he loves you. He's crazy about you. He thinks that there's a reason that you're here and it's to have a relationship with God and you can't have that relationship without Jesus. So, what does it mean when I say he covers sin? What did he do to cover sin? Jesus went and everything that you've done wrong if you accept Him as your Savior, if you pray that prayer and you ask Him to be your Savior and to forgive you of your sins, He wipes the slate, he wipes the slate clean. Everything that you've ever done wrong, kids, teenagers, adults, will be erased if you accept Jesus as your Savior. So hopefully this will work. The Word of God is the living book. And everything that I just told you is in the Word of God. If you want to know about the death, resurrection, or the death, burial, or resurrection of Jesus Christ, look it up in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. In any one of those four books, you'll find everything that I just said. So he went, he said, Craig, you need a Savior. For everything that you've done wrong, you need a Savior. And he said, you know what, Craig, everything that you've done wrong, and I'll tell you what, the list was probably really big. He erased it. Just like that. And there's no more. And if you look, the word, my sin, is burned into the cross. And then he said, but that's not enough. I need to... I not only need to take care of Craig's sins, but I need to take care of your sins as well. So guess what? He covered my sins. He forgiven me. I now live for Jesus Christ. I'm up here telling you guys, if you want a world life changing experience, come to Jesus. Find out what he can do for you. Because I tell you what, you'll never be the same. My sins are gone and your sins are gone. He took them away. They're no longer there. Ain't that amazing? Amen. I want to show you something. So that's where the story ends, right? He died on the cross. I've been forgiven of my sin. But see, the greatest miracle that Jesus ever did was not turning water into wine, was not healing the blinded eyes, was not raising people from the dead, although those were great miracles and really cool. The greatest miracle that Jesus ever did was on Easter Sunday, over 2,000 years ago, when he defied what people say anybody can do when he rose from the dead. Because he said, I'll be gone three days. In those three days, the Bible says he went to hell to get the keys to death, hell, and the grave. So we no longer have to 
grieve over death. We no longer have to worry about sickness, finances, or anything else. Because see, Jesus got the keys. And Jesus is the Savior of the world because of everything He did on the cross, we've got it covered. But the story doesn't end there. What did Jesus do on Easter Sunday? What? He rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. He died on Good Friday, spent three days in the tomb. They put him in there. They said, okay, he claims he's going to raise from the dead and he's going to do all this stuff. But you know what? I don't trust those guys that came with him. What are they called? Disciples. Disciples, yeah. I don't trust those guys. So we're going to put two of our biggest soldiers to guard that door to make sure that they don't come and take his body and just say, Jesus was resurrected because, I mean, I guess you could do that, right? If nobody was there to watch it. So, so they put somebody there to watch it so they can make sure that nobody came and took Jesus' body and then claim that he rose from the dead. So I've got this cup here. And what makes Jesus so special? What makes being a Christian so special? There, there's many different gods you can serve. I mean, he's heard of Buddha. Yeah. Buddha was a man. He was worshipped. They thought he was great. Okay, now I'm, I'm, because of the power of God, I have the ability and the, the right to say this. Buddha was a man. He may have been a good man. I don't know. Never met him. But people worship him. But guess what happened to Buddha? He died. Not to forgive us of our sins. Not to change our hearts or anything. He died because he got old. Or he got sick. And he died. If you go to Buddha's grave, you crack it open. Now this is an egg, okay? You go to Buddha's grave, you open it up, guess what you're going to find there? Buddha. There's another guy, Muhammad. Muhammad was a man. He was worshipped. People thought he was great. Muhammad died. Not to save us from our sins. Not to be resurrected in three days. Because he got old, got sick, whatever, but he died. You go to Muhammad's grave, you know what you're going to find? Muhammad. Another guy, Krishna. This man walked the earth just like we did. Got old, got sick, whatever, died. If you go to his grave, you open it up, guess what you're going to find there? Christian. But I got one more. Jesus claimed that we're going to go to his grave. He said, I'm going to rise in three days because I'm the Savior of the world. You go to Jesus' grave. You open it up, that's what you're going to find there. Nothing. Jesus rose, guys. Jesus ain't in the grave no more. He rose. You don't believe me? Go check again. No. He's gone. He's not there no more. Because Jesus claimed, I'm going to live. I died, but I'm going to rise again. I'm going to rise again. I'm going to come back eventually to see you guys again and to take you all to heaven. Okay. So our scripture tonight is right here on this cross. But uh, if you want to go ahead and put it up, Jacob. I wanted to put a, I wanted to find this great scripture that you guys are going to just be like, wow, this is like the greatest scripture I've ever heard. But then I thought about the one scripture that we probably all know that says everything about what I just said tonight. It's John 3.16. Very simple, something you can remember. For God so loved the world, so loved the world. Who's the world? You guys are the world. I'm the world. So loved us that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that whosoever, any one of us, believe in him should not perish, should not die, should not have to go through any of all those bad things that we sometimes have to go through. We don't have to go through that because of Jesus, but we will have everlasting life. One day, Jesus is coming back, guys, whether you believe me or not, he's coming back. He's going to take those who are saved, those who have turned their life over to Christ, and tonight, Everybody in this church has the opportunity to know that Jesus, to ask him into your heart, so that when he comes back, you can be with him in heaven. Amen. Yeah. Sounds like a good deal, right? You know how much this is going to cost you? It's not going to cost you anything but your heart. 
He ain't coming to take your life and to make it bad and to all this stuff. Oh, sure, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to stop doing the bad things we do and all that kind of stuff. But you know what? Jesus said, "Come as you are. I am here because I love you and I want you to know me and I want you to be my son and I want to forgive you of everything that you've done wrong. Everything, everything, even those things that we don't know about, that your parents don't know about, that you've done or did or do." Jesus said, I'll forgive you of that. I got that covered. All those, whatever it may be, adults, whatever it may be, your past life, whatever it may be, it can be wiped away clean tonight. For the simple cost of your heart. You give Jesus your heart. He takes everything.